let us experience some curiosity. I want you all to take that bag that you've been given and open it up. Imagine this bag is your school bag and it's lunchtime. You find your lunchbox and your mom has packed some yummy noodles for you. Does this remind you all of something? The nostalgia of going to school maybe? Right. It reminds me of DNA though. Why? <laughs> Let me tell you. This bag of yours, school bag, is a human cell and the box, the nucleus. And these strands that you find in the box are the noodles representing the DNA. Isn't it easy to visualize where you can find DNA in a human cell now? Okay, let's take a closer look at the noodles that you have. They're all of different sizes and each strand of noodle is a chromosome. Every human cell has 23 pairs of such chromosomes where one set is received from your mother and the other set from your father. Every DNA strand, the chromosome, um, it has different and unique regions. Some regions are very active, like the you know, very nicely coated part of the noodles with sauce, whereas some of them, some parts of the noodles are bland, and this is the inactive, representing the inactive region of the DNA. This is, of course, a very broad understanding of how DNA occurs in nature. This is probably going to help you visualize better. Right, uh, so what I did in under two minutes right now is explain the fundamentals of genetics. And I taught you what the structure of a DNA is, how many chromosomes are there, and different regions of the DNA, euchromatin and heterochromatin. Do you think after this experiment that understanding natural sciences is hard? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Suchita Champak. I am a communications consultant in the sciences uh, on a mission to transform how we communicate and engage with science. I enable science communication practitioners to communicate science in more interesting and compelling ways. Uh, as we start, um, I want to understand how all of you perceive science. Um, with a show of hands, I want you to tell me um, if you find science to be hard. Now I know that we have a room full of engineers, but have you ever felt if science was hard? Can you give me a show of hands? That's nice. Now, another show of hands for these reasons why you thought science was hard. Did you find science was hard? because it has too many technicalities? Yes. Did you uh, find science to be hard because uh, you didn't enjoy it in school? That's nice. Yes, or did you think that your parents told you or made you feel that you need to put extra efforts to excel in science? Yes, I can see more hands going up. Or is it just because you thought that, you know, science was for the smart? Okay, it's very interesting. Now, I see that a lot of you did agree to at least one of the reasons. Now, why is that? Why do we uh, perceive science to be hard? It is simply because of the attributes that we've given to it. Since childhood, we've been told to perceive science this way. Now, I want you to think a little bit on how ingrained this mental model of thinking that science is hard or not easy and anything else like art, history is easy. I can't remember how every human civilization has contributed uh, to the evolution of how we are living today. But what I can tell you is a list of proteins that has helped you digest that missile pav or sandwich that you have had today. It's probably difficult for a historian to do that. Do you see how relative, easy, and difficult is? Right. Now, 
I want um, you to observe how these mental models are so apparent even in our everyday life. You know, like how we keep scientists, research, and the likes of all of that at a distance. Why is that so? I want to distill these root causes into four main things that we don't do right by ourselves. First, the rote education system that does not teach us how whatever we have learned comes together and how the world works. Second, the compelling societal norms that value people who have taken up science more than other people who have chosen to become an artist or a historian. Third, the way we create, curate, and consume content, because it so happens that we uh, very easily cite a YouTuber or a news article to lay a claim to a fact before fact-checking. And fourth, and probably the most important one, is how science is conducted in our country today, where it is, does not go beyond the confines of the lab and leaves no opportunity for the taxpayers to understand how and where their money is being utilized. How can we break this mental model? How can we make science more accessible? How can we bring science and society closer? It, there's a very simple answer to it. And that is simply by making scientists tell more stories. Let me explain why storytelling is a very important aspect here, by telling a story. I was um, in, one of, in, in a meeting with one of the investors for our company, and I was discussing our business model and explaining to him, uh, especially in the context of the pandemic, how important building a com robust communication strategy to bridge science and society was. And um, he patiently heard me out throughout uh, uh, my presentation and then said, Suchita, you know, I'm very excited to see how passionate you are about this, but I hate to break it to you that people are going to forget science, go back to their lives and forget everything, right? I had to pause. With the experience that I had, I knew this was true in some sense. Would you have made efforts to know what a virus looks like or what an RT-PCR is if your life was not on the line? Probably not. And this behavior of ignorance of science is so ubiquitous. Rumination over all of these thoughts made me realize that it is not the people's disinterest in science, but also on how scientists bring science to society. Academia has tied science to the ivory towers of the privileged. Uh, it could be in the way we conduct science that is riddled with mystery, jargon, and uncertainty. It could also be in the way we conduct research in the confines of the lab and also in places of congregation where it is the discussion around science is not accessible. In universities, it is often taught and and you also experience how to conduct research. We largely lack the training on how we can take science beyond the lab, walls of the lab. It is time we realign a purpose and correct our mistakes from the past. There has been a dawn, there, there has been the dawn of a community in the sciences recently. It's not that they never existed, but in recent times, there is a boom in the understanding and realization of the significance of this community in bridging the chasm between science and society. The ones that are setting up mobile stargazing camps 
across the country where they're carrying teles telescopes to the remotest parts of the country. The ones that are interacting with science students, sensitizing them with next world issues like antimicrobial resistance. The ones that are talking about how things work in a regional language, making small audio snippets and distributing it across messaging platforms like WhatsApp, and many, many more. These people are the invincible superheroes that are connecting the dots between science and society. We, science communicators, are working very hard to blend into your everyday life and make you enjoy the marvels of science effortlessly. But we can't do it alone. We need help and we need help from you. You can help us by asking more questions. You can ask more questions to seek more answers that would lead to more questions. By getting on this cycle of asking questions and seeking answers, what you are doing is understanding yourself better and your surrounding. By a way, realizing how intertwined our lives are with science. If you're wondering where you can ask these questions or seek answers, you don't have to step out of your everyday life for that. It could be um, visiting science museums, science exhibitions and workshops. It could be by reading books, comics, and also listening to podcasts around science that can tingle your curiosity. It could also be by watching science films and documentary that actually make you visualize and experience science in everyday life. These are some of the common ways which you probably would have guessed when I was saying. But let me give you a couple of more ways which you didn't know. You can attend open days at academic institutions where you can directly interact with the researchers and also maybe get to visit their lab and see how science is conducted. Or a simpler way is just to find a scientist and invite them to your apartment gathering or a cafe and have an informal chat. There are so many ways where you can innovate and see and seek find uh, seek and find uh, spaces where you can interact and seek these answers. Now, before I leave the stage, I want to demonstrate a little bit on how, when you get on this bandwagon of seeking answers, you enjoy science. I was at the beach the other day and. It was a sandy kind of one, uh, but it was so much fun because I took my first surf lesson. You know how at the end of the day, it's so hard to get the sand grains out of your clothes. You probably have to wash it more than twice and still find some of them in your pockets or that little stitch of embroidery. That was when I realized how chemotherapy works. What? How did I go from beaches to chemotherapy? Let me explain. Now, these chemicals that are injected in your body during treatment kill all or most of the cancer cells with few rounds of chemotherapy. Like how the removal of these sand grains depend on how many pockets you have or the material of your cloth is, the success rate of chemotherapy varies based on the genetic makeup and the type of cancer that you have. Now, again, under a minute, I taught you another concept, chemotherapy. Do you still think grasping or understanding natural sciences is hard? No, I don't think so. Or at least I made you a little more curious than before you met me. Scientists and science communicators are making extraordinary efforts to create such spaces where you can have open, unhindered conversations and seek these answers. 
but we can do more and effectively only with your help. So the question remains, will you help us get science back to you? Thank you. <laughs>